Up to now, we've only been able to calculate the sum of a few very specific series, like geometric series and some telescoping series. In this video, we'll see how to use Taylor series to find the sums of other series. Let's start by finding the Taylor series for arctan of x centered at x equals zero. Since arctan of x is equal to the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared, one easy way to find the Taylor series for arctan of x is to build it up, starting with the formula for a geometric series. 1 over 1 minus x is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n. Now 1 over 1 plus x squared is equal to 1 over 1 minus negative x squared, so I can plug negative x squared in for x in this power series. And I get the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative x squared to the n, which simplifies to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n. Therefore, arctan of x, which is the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx, is going to be equal to the integral of this power series, at least up to a constant. I can integrate this power series term by term to get the sum of negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1, divided by 2n plus 1, plus a constant. To figure out the constant c, I can plug 0 in for x on both sides of my equation. Since all of my powers of x involve a positive power of x, even when n equals 0, I've got x to the 1. So there's always at least one copy of x there. So if I plug in x equals 0, all of these terms go to 0. And arctan of 0 is also 0. So plugging in x equals 0 gives me 0 equals the sum of a bunch of zeros plus c. In other words, the constant is 0. Therefore, this expression right here gives me a Taylor series representation of arctan. Let's take a moment to figure out which x values this equation is actually true for. We know that the geometric series formula holds for x values between negative 1 and 1, not including the endpoints. Therefore, when I plug in negative x squared for x, I get an equation that holds for negative x squared between 1 and negative 1, which is equivalent to saying that x is between 1 and negative 1. And when I take the integral of both sides, I still get an equation that holds true for x between negative 1 and 1. So I'm guaranteed that this equation up here holds for x values between negative 1 and 1. But in fact, it's not hard to check that this series actually converges at the endpoints of negative 1 and 1. This follows from the alternating series test. Since when we plug in x equals negative 1 or x equals 1, either way, we get an alternating series that converges. So this series converges on the closed interval from negative 1 to 1, and it's equal to arctan on that open interval. In fact, it turns out that it's equal to arctan even on the closed interval. In particular, the equation holds for x equal to 1. When x is equal to 1, then I plug into the equation to get that arctan of 1 is equal to the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, times 1 to the 2n plus 1, that's just 1, over 2n plus 1. I can rewrite that. Now arctan of 1 is the angle whose tangent is 1. So arctan of 1 is going to be pi over 4. In other words, I now have a series that sums to pi over 4. Let's write out the first few terms of this series and see what it looks like. The first term is 1, the next term minus a third, plus a fifth, minus a seventh, plus a ninth, and so on. In other words, multiplying both sides by 4 
we get that pi is equal to 4 minus 4 thirds plus 4 fifths minus 4 sevenths plus 4 ninths minus 4 elevenths and so on. If you've ever wondered how to generate digits for pi, here's one way. We have found the sum of kind of a natural series to look at and we have found a beautiful formula for pi. For the next example, let's start by finding the Taylor series for f of x equals ln x centered at x equals 1. We can write out the pattern of the function and its derivatives. And we soon notice that the nth derivative will have negative 1 to the n minus 1 times n minus 1 factorial times x to the n. Since we're centering at x equals 1, we'll plug in 1 and get the nth derivative of f at 1 is equal to negative 1 to the n minus 1 times n minus 1 factorial. Therefore, the Taylor series for ln of x will be the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of f to the n at 1 over n factorial times x minus 1 to the n. Since this pattern for the nth derivative of f really only works starting with the first derivative, not with the zeroth derivative, I'm going to split out the first term, which is just going to be ln of 1, which is actually 0, and then all the other terms follow the same pattern, and we have negative 1 to the n minus 1 times n minus 1 factorial divided by the n factorial times x minus 1 to the n. This simplifies to ln of x is equal to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n minus 1 times x minus 1 to the n over n since the n minus 1 factorial cancels with almost all of the n factorial leaving just the factor n in the denominator. So I now have a formula for the Taylor series for ln of x. It's easy to check using the ratio test that this power series has a radius of a convergence of 1, and so it converges when x minus 1 is between 1 and negative 1. In other words, when x is between 0 and 2. And although I won't prove it here, it turns out that this Taylor series really does converge to its function, ln of x, and in fact, it converges to ln x on the interval for x greater than 0 and less than or equal to 2. Now if I plug in x equal to 2 into my equation, I get something interesting. I get that ln of 2 is equal to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n minus 1 of 2 minus 1 to the n. Well, that's just 1 to the n, which is just 1. And so I get ln of 2 is equal to the sum of negative 1 to the n minus 1 over n. That should be looking familiar to you. And yes, it's true. This is just the alternating harmonic series. 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 fourth and so on. So Taylor series has given us the sum of the alternating harmonic series, and it is ln of 2. In this video, we use Taylor series to find the sum of the alternating harmonic series. We also used Taylor series for arctangent to find that the sum of a different series is actually equal to pi. As you get more familiar with Taylor series, you'll be able to calculate the sum of other series by recognizing them as the series that you get by plugging in a certain value of x into the Taylor series of a particular function. For example, if you see the series 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial and so on, you might recognize that 
as the number 1 plugged into the formula for the Taylor series of e to the x. In other words, this series is equal to e to the 1, which is e.